to, to brag. brag. She's efforts to reckon with. And certainly that's no myth. They said she'd never make it. I'm going to say, you Assemble, assemble. But today she's chilling with the big boys. And no, sir, she doesn't have to fake it. Remember, Rita Owusu from Choco. Today she's the key of the traveler, an international speaker, an anchor, a pillar, a city builder. Her detractors are now her attractors, and some even her benefactors. When you ask her, she'll say her secret is God the creator. And yes, indeed, it's definitely the God factor. Today, God has laid before her a table with a seat at the round table. He has made her a woman well able because she believes in the blood that speaks better things than that of Abel. The camp of the enemy is made unstable because when she steps in the arena, it's, it's a banger. banger. She silenced the voice of failure and makes success louder. louder. The lives and destinies of people have been made stable. Now family life is sweeter and marriages are no longer in danger. Because when you ask Mama Rita, she always has the perfect answer. So, so as she turns 60, 60, we pray the King of Glory continues to bless you. With a soft life. May all your enemies keep going. Oh, lo, lo, lo. Oh, lo, 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 as you de bugao.
by Chukuda Painter. And on behalf of the Creative Art Department, we'd like to wish Mami a happy birthday with this beautiful, parceled portrait. Siblings, we didn't know what to do. We were so naive to think about anything to do, to engage in a trade or something. But I believe on a hospital bed, she was praying that God should send an angel. And indeed, God sent an angel, the angel called Mama Rita. And since the day that we encountered Mama Rita, that was the end to our tears. She ensured that we never lack anything. Periodically, she would send food to our home. She would give us money. She would pray for us. She would encourage us. And today, these three siblings, academically, we are doing well. Professionally, we are doing well. The nine years old baby or baby girl that she left behind is working at a bank, a UMB bank, as a professional uh, worker. And this can be only the doing of the Lord. I had been in Royal House for three years without attending any comp meeting. And 2012 was my year that I'd got into the brim. As that year, I really wanted to give up because nothing seemed to work again. Nothing was working for me. I remember one day coming to church and my, my focus was just to come and cry on God and say goodbye because I wanted to go and commit suicide. That year, that, the day I came to church, it was camp meeting week. So they would attend camp on Thursday. And there was a powerful sermon and testimonies from the previous camp. So I was like, oh God, so you can do these things for all these people. So that year, I decided to challenge God. I decided to also go to the camp for the first time. As at that time, I was in Form 3. And I'd been given just three weeks vacation. And within the three weeks, I'm to look for school fees, provision, and pocket money. So when I decided to go to the camp, the prayer was, God, give me a helper. In my mind, God should give me some rich man or woman to adopt me. So that was my prayer. I went to the camp meeting. And there was this dream that I would have every year. Some way, somehow, I didn't understand the dream, so I decided to share the dream with Mama Rita. When I told her about the deduct from our salaries, the following school fees, and every other expenditure that you, you do, the deduct from our salaries. Ladies and gentlemen, that's how come I registered for the BEC. And when the results came out, I had aggregate six with 10 ones distinction. That was the best performance in the whole community. So the teachers felt encouraged that they should go on and still support me. I went to secondary school, but after the first year, their strength could no longer support me. Then I had something from the school administration. They sacked me from the examination hall and asked me to come home to get school fees. Around that time, one of the teachers told us that she has a brother who is a pastor of Royal House Chapel and that there is a scholarship for brilliant but needy students. Why don't I apply? So I came, I applied for the scholarship, then I came to Royal House and a meeting was scheduled to meet mommy. That's when I met mommy. At that meeting in her office, she told me that the window period for scholarship application was over. But after I finished narrating my story to her, the motherly instinct in mommy that even though the window period is over, I will make room for you. And as God will have it, that very Sunday, Apostle General stood on the altar and declared through the airwaves and sent instruction to the school that they shouldn't sack me for school fees ever again. And that was the end of my school fees wahala. Before I could go home, mommy loaded me with a lot of provisions. It was called more than I can carry. It was so many that I had to carry the provisions home 
at the back of a pickup. And that became a continuous thing. Every year when I go to school through medical school, Mama Rita had been supporting all through. I'm also a beneficiary of the Royal House Chapel Scholarship Scheme. My situation was quite peculiar. I had the determination to go back to school, but I fought many world wars. I had to reset my examination after SHS, but still could not make it to the university. But Mama Rita would not stop encouraging me to continue trying. And finally, God opened the door and I had the opportunity to go to the university. And I recall vividly when I received my admission letter and I took it to mommy, she was at her office. Literally, she screamed from her office, running, honey, honey, where was she walking to? Running to, to daddy's office to show daddy that I have received admission. <laughs> Going to school, she made sure that each, each semester, I had money and I had the needed provision. I recall sometimes we will come from school to the premises, not because we want to come engage the altar. Strategically, we know where she will be in church. And we will come and pass where she will be. And say, oh, mommy, good if you know. Mommy, good if you And by the time she will oh, do you have anything on you? She will give you money. And I recall one of the days, she didn't have money on her. She wrote a check for me from her personal account. And I still remember the location of the bank, somewhere around the ring road. What a mother that we have. Today, I stand as a graduate from the University of Ghana. Mommy, through the encouragement that you gave me, I didn't end there. I continued further and completed my master's in MIS with Coventry University, United Kingdom. I remember after the prayers, mommy invited me to her house, gave me food, and gave me money. And the money was in an envelope, very huge. And I thought that was all. Only when I was about leaving, she called me that the provisions there are mine. And these are jute bags full of provisions. Collect, conflict, we tabby, things that I hadn't even eaten some before. Some of them I had to take them to school for the DBs to teach me how to eat them because I hadn't eaten them before. And that day she said she was going to put me on Royal House Scholarship. That year that she put me on the Royal House Scholarship, I thought, oh, it was just for the SHS. So after SHS, then that is it. After SHS, my results came and I'd gotten Kwame and Kwame University. I told her, and she said, oh, the um, scholarship continues. I was like, hey, wow. So mommy took care of me, placed me on warehouse scholarship, and paid my fees from level 100, 200 to 400. And not only that, every semester, mommy would give me provisions. Whenever she came on campus, she would give me pocket money. And today, I stand as a graduate from Kwame Nkrumah University with Bachelor of Arts in Social Work and Political Science. Not all. I am also, I've recently started my master's in Master of Science in Facilities Management. The story now is different. Mommy, you picked three siblings, and you knew them from nowhere. We were not too handsome and too beautiful, but you still opened up your arms to receive us. Today, the fatherless children that you picked, I stand here as a father of three children because you showed me love. I'm a proud husband of a beautiful wife. And to add to it, because you encourage me not to give up and go back to school, today I can stand and say to the glory of God that I consult for both in the field of IT for both local and international organization and even the office of the president. My utmost joy is the opportunity that you gave me to serve in the house of God. 
And today I stand as an IT and media manager of Royal House Chapel. <laughs> Mama Rita, thank you. On my behalf, thank you. On behalf of my mother, thank you. And on behalf of my siblings, thank you. Thank you for giving us a legacy that the generations to come will also live with them. That we should love others, show them compassion, irrespective of their condition. Happy birthday, Mama Rita. Mommy, because you saw a future in me, because you believed in me when I didn't even believe in myself, today I'm no longer the sugar cane seller who used to be at Abusokai and sleep at Kaneshi on the street. I'm no longer on the street. Today, I work as Ghana Airport Company, as building pavement officer in the facilities management. <laughs> Mommy, thank you for believing in me. Thank you for giving me a sense of direction. Thank you for giving me hope. Thank you for changing the story and changing the narrative for me. I would have still been on the street because my, the people I used to sell the sugar cane with are still on the street. But thanks to you, I am a different person now. Today on your birthday, I want to say a very big thank you and I want to wish you a happy birthday. It is my prayer that God will give you long life with perfect health so that the seed that you have deposited in me, you will reap from it. Thank you, Mommy. Mommy, today, I'm also a graduate of University of Ghana Medical School. I'm a fully licensed medical doctor. And, and because, I want, to, because I, want, I want to specialize in surgery, I wasn't posted to the north, but I stood up one day and decided that I'd go to the north and learn to experience. So when I got there, there were two doctors already in the district that I went to. But six months into my arrival, they decided to go back to school. So I was the only doctor that was left in that district hospital, overseeing a population of 114,000 people. Today, I performed close to 15 surgeries in a week. Last year, the hospital was the overall best performing hospital in the entire region. I say by the ICU, your hand is in it. Mommy, you are touching lives in the north. You are making a difference in the north. The boy that you made room for today has come to honor you. May the God of heaven, the God that you serve, may he lift you up. May your legacy live on, Mommy. We bless and salute you. Thank you for believing in me. Thank you, Royal House, for believing you in me.
Up next on stage is the all-female choir founded by the celebrant, Mama Rita. Ladies and gentlemen, shall we invite on stage the Royal Voices?
Mama Marita. Mama Marita. Mama Marita. You a woman of strength, dignity, and grace. A woman other women look up to. A woman we thank God for. Thank you for a, being a beacon of unity under which we can gather. A woman of truth. Who, when words fail, the goodness of your heart shows through. A woman of upright character who models wisdom and understanding. And come on, a woman of beauty who receives admiration for her favorable countenance, fresh style and poise. I would like to thank you with a sincere and a genuine heart for being a mother, a sister, a friend. You have been there on many occasions. You have laughed with me in times of joy and you have been a comfort to me in times of sadness. And I honor the grace and mantle over your life. May you live long and may your children's and your children's 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 children call you blessed. On behalf of my husband, Bishop Dominic New Love Alote, our children, the Congregation of Living Faith Ministries, International Church, and your living ladies, I wish you a glorious, fruitful, and blessed, happy birthday. This is just the beginning. Mama Rita, enjoy, enjoy. God bless you. I love you from my heart. In 19... Man ...who has stood out amongst many to be a blessing to this generation. Ladies and gentlemen, let us make a loud noise of celebration for our mother, Mama Rita. Hallelujah. Amen. Going into secondary school, it was a big challenge for me. Struggle to get placement. Mommy played a very key role in the secondary school that I finally landed in. My first choice rejected me. The security man saw my results and told me it is not admissible in that school. So I didn't even enter to check the notice board. Second choice rejected me. Third choice rejected me. Mommy together with daddy, assisted me into Odogono Senior High. At the time, I felt the Lord had looked down and frowned upon me. But the Lord used this woman to be a blessing. By the time I came out of Odogono Senior High, I had scored six A's in eight subjects. She played a very key role in my decision for a woman who today I call a wife. And we are blessed with two wonderful children, all working powerfully in two of the leading banks here in Ghana. Ladies and gentlemen, I am who I am because of the benevolence of this woman. Help me celebrate her. Proverbs 19 verse 17 says, anyone who does good to the poor is lending to the Lord. And it is Jehovah who will reward that person. So whatever you see here, ladies and gentlemen, she has paid and lent to the Lord because of her service to the poor. And today she's reaping that reward. Ladies and gentlemen, let us celebrate the blessings of Jehovah upon this mother of all mothers. One of the processes or channels by which she has been a blessing in this church and to the nations is what we call the School of Restoration. The School of Restoration is a department and a unit that is led by Mama Rita to bring together social misfits, drug addicts, ex-convicts, prostitutes, shower love upon them 
and lead them in the way of the Lord as she received many years herself. We are going to hear testimonies of people who have benefited from her leadership and her love, her benevolence and her care in the School of Restoration. To help us do this, I'll first call Maxwell Mawu Lolo and the wife. Thank you, Pastor Siva. Hallelujah. Amen. Maxwell Maulolo was born to a mother who was 15 years of age. His mother was 15 years when she had him, teenage pregnancy. The man who was responsible for the pregnancy was living in the Volta region with many wives. So what we call a father's care, a father's love, he never had that. One month old, he was checked into the care of his grandmother, who started taking care of him in a very poverty-stricken community. He says he didn't have his mother around because she herself was struggling to take care of her needs. There was nothing like a mother's care, a mother's love, and she grew up in a very terrible condition. Education was troubling, eating was troubling, where to lay his head was equally troubling. Maulolo, you said even how to eat was a problem. How precarious was your situation at the time? Yeah, so things were so bad that uh, I had to join myself with a childhood friend who was into scamming. Okay, he had a lot of money. And so I've graduated for Accra Polytechnic and then there wasn't much to do. So I had to join myself to him. And then we started scamming. And along the way, this scammer also smokes as well. So while she was coming, I also started smoking. So he graduated from HND, Accra Technical University. Around this time, he didn't know Christ. He was living a wayward life. He comes into contact with these scammers that he's talking about and engaged in their trade. They introduced him to marijuana, weed, ganja. He smoked the weed so badly that he says one day the thing got into his head. He walked from Insawam to Koforidria. Ladies and gentlemen, for our online viewers, in Sawam to Koforidia here in Ghana is 60 kilometers. He walked on foot from in Sawam to Koforidia. In that state, it was obvious that he was becoming a lunatic. He was going mad. Psychologically, he was going berserk. Everything about his life was going downward. Then somebody paid his lorry fare back to Accra because he didn't have weed to smoke and walk back to Accra. <laughs> so he gets back to Accra, and ladies and gentlemen, this was 2012. He says, when he, when he got to Accra, he walked straight to the beach. Because he was hearing strange voices. When he got to a beach, he didn't know what to do. Whether to dive into the sea or commit suicide. But then around that same time, he heard a group of people praying at the beach. He walked towards them. Stood there for so long and said, I need to find the Christ that they are praying to. Whilst at the beach, he remembered he had a childhood friend who fellowships with Royal House Chapel. So he calls that childhood friend, who also happened to be a ROSA coordinator and a pastor of the church. The person says, come over. This was 31st December 2012. The day he checked into Royal House Chapel, 
that friend was leading a group to go and see the Apostle General. He followed them to the Apostle General. Daddy prayed for the group and said, deliverance is coming to someone in your midst. The friend listened to his story and introduced him to the school of restoration. That was when he made contact with Mama Rita. You said when you encountered mommy, you saw what motherly love actually meant for the first time. Yes, please. What happened at the yeah. school of restoration? Okay, so like Pastor Chiva rightly said, uh, because of the age at which my mom gave birth to me, she wasn't sound financially, physically, emotionally as well. So a couple of things that she was supposed to do for me, she wasn't able to do it. But by the grace of God, my encounter with Mama Rita, everything changed. The, the hug she will give you, give you it's, it's so unique. She was That's, hugging you. Yes, yes, yes. And, okay, before I go on, let me just give out this quote. Please just, let me share. So today I chance on this quote by the Apostle General. Okay. And I just want to share. I just, I'll build on it. Yes, sir. Apostle General said that, where people see wilderness or bushes, God see oasis of garden. Mm. So like my colleagues earlier said, and myself, because of the spirit of God within my Marita, she saw beyond my physical, my mm. parents. She saw something else. And the love, the care, the fellowship, like pa Pastor Chiva said earlier, because of what my dad did, fellowship was cut. But my Marita encouraged me not to give up. And so I, rec I connected back to my dad. Every month we, we remit my dad. We even go to visit my dad. All this Mama Mita taught me. And the love, mm. the fellowship, mm. everything was so amazing. So you are saying you lost contact with your dad for so many years, but by the teaching of Mama Rita, you were led to reconcile with your father. Today, he is sending money for the upkeep of his father every month. The man who was irresponsible towards him, now, by the leadership of Mama Rita and the teaching, he's been responsible towards that father. He was out of job for so many years. He was struggling himself. He says, Mommy encouraged him to go back to school. His story today. He's a graduate from the University of Cape Coast with his first degree. The woman standing by him is his lawfully and legally wedded wife. He is working as an officer in one of the leading banks in Ghana. And he is also a pastor trainee sharing the gospel of Christ across. This is what the life and leadership of Mama Rita has done in this young man's family. Today he is totally transformed. He is a new man and he has started a new phase in his family. You say you have final words for Mama Rita for who she has been to you. Mama Rita, you are a blessing not just for us, but generations yet unborn. God richly bless you. We are very proud of you. Through the love you extended to us, we, by the grace of God, we also started what we call the Father's Love Project. With the help of the Apostle General, we also go out. With what your God has done for us, we just can't keep it to ourselves. So every man, we also go out to reach out to others. Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. Let's celebrate. Our mother, the Mama Rita. you speak turns thin around your outstretched hand had lifted me. You took away the chains and bonds that held me
Babylon Stage Now is one of the 13 choirs here in the headquarters, the senior choir of all choirs in Royal House Chapel. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Praise and Showers.
Celebrate the King of Kings. Celebrate the Lord of Lords. Can we celebrate the 60th birthday of the Premier Lady of Royal House Chapel? Come on, give God praise. Joe Metal is in the house. Oh, I heard only 17 voices. Celestine Doko is in the house. MOG Music, Pastor Nana Yaobachi is in the house. Very shortly, we are going to enter into one hour of uninterrupted worship. And heaven is about to come down tonight. Oh, I, tell, I told you from the beginning that you are not going to regret being here tonight at all. Whatever it is, that you left to be here, I prophesy in the name of Jesus that you will never be in any regret in the name of Jesus. You are leaving this oil dome with good news in your hand. There is a certain call and letter that is coming to your phone. I feel like I'm prophesying to myself. I feel like you came for a worship concert and not a miracle service. But I declare over 200 people here tonight that this week a miracle is coming to you. If you are the one shouting and say, I receive it. Amen. I want to acknowledge a few guests that we have tonight. And then we shall continue with the program. This is a special lady. She is also turning 60 years next month. She is the first lady of the Victory Bible Church International. Reverend Dora Takia Boy is in the house with her team. Shall we acknowledge Mama Dora? God bless you. Apostle Laureen is in the house. Please give us a wave, Apostle Laureen. God bless you. Reverend Richmond Okran and his wife are here. Please, where are you? Shall we acknowledge Reverend Richmond? God bless you, the architect of the oil dome. Apostle Amwako Atta is here with his wife. God bless you. He was a blessing at the Pillars of Christ retreat. This Saturday, we have a team representing Mama Christy Dotete from Solid Rock. Shall we acknowledge the Solid Rock team? God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for coming. We have a daughter of the house. The Honorable Nato, she is here tonight. God bless you, Honorable, for coming to celebrate. Oh, and her husband is here as well. Sorry, sir. God bless you. God bless you. The MCE of Ablekuma Central, Honorable Mariamba Am Amui is here. God bless you, Honorable. Our very own Honorable, Honorable, the MP of Ladade Kotopon is in the house. Honorable Rita Odole Soa. God bless you. I know she's here around here somewhere. We have uh, representatives from the alma mater of Mama Rita St. Mary's School. The headmistress is here with a team of teachers and students, current students of St. Mary's. 
there are also old students. Oh, wow, wow. What a blessing. What a blessing. God bless you. We shall be hearing from them later in the program. We have uh, some alumni from Gimpa. Mama Rita's mates from Gimpa. They are here tonight. Where are they? Old students of Gimpa. Mama Rita's mates. We shall be hearing them shortly. But I want to acknowledge God bless you. God bless you right there. We appreciate you. One of the six sisters is in the house. For those of you that know that the six sisters, this is a group of ladies that were in the fellowship called Showers of Blessing, um, a team led by the Apostle General. They were a student evangelism group going around from school to school to preach the gospel, to evangelize and to minister to them, in which Mama Rita was a member of the group. One of these sisters is here. Mrs. Irene Akweku is here. God bless you, Auntie Irene, for coming to celebrate Mama Rita. This is a special group. Oh, the Awusu family is here. Mama Rita's parents, her siblings, her cousins. Some of them have flown from the UK. And they are here. Come on, shall we acknowledge the Owusu family? God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming. On Mother's Day, um, graphic communications bestowed upon Mama Rita the model mother of the year. So, I'm sure a few weeks ago, you saw Mama Rita on the front page of the, 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 the newspaper publication, The Mirror, the model mother of the year. Over the course of 12 months, from Mother's Day 2022 to Mother's Day 2023, She's going to be on, embarking on a series of social interventions and ministering to the underprivileged in the society. They organized a special lunch on her behalf on Mother's Day. And the team from Graphic Communications, led by Madam Efia Akese, they are here to come and support and be a blessing to Mama Rita. Please, where is the graphic team? Graphic Communications. Oh, all the way at the back there, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for coming. I'm sure we'll get a chance to see you right after here. Amen. How many of you have enjoyed the program so far? The theme for this celebration is Mama Rita at 60, the mother, the, her calling, and her example, the mother, her calling, and her example. And so far, you have heard testimonies that are supporting this theme. Her impact as a mother to her, her spiritual children, her calling, and her example. Next up, we have another testimony to support the ministry of the woman of God in Mama Rita. Giving us this testimony and anchoring this testimony is her firstborn and her first daughter, lawyer, pastor, Nana Akosuya Crunchy Ankara. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for the Lord. As Pastor Papa said, this testimony is going to support the calling of Mama Rita. We are going to watch a short clip and I'll come back. As we watch the video, Lady Dick and Naomi, kindly join me up here.
Ni powerful men and women of God. I preach here no. Mene. No fear no na kefi mabuwe. Ni sene. Na kan bele sa mi na kebwe uwe. Ni diabo ye na kan bele sa mi. You will never die. I live, you will never die before your time. You will be healed. You will walk again. You will come to church. You will serve your God in the ushering department. Get position now, Halle. Now, I'm a small piece in the minister. Share your foreign affairs. Now, my small means an ambassador. About your ambassador, no, mean up with America, mean up with your UK, near by around, or be in a small number. Your school, your blue cheer, and the buyer school, your blue cheer. I bless you with a mother's blessing. The video you just saw is from Royal Ladies Camp 2011, where Mama Rita prayed and prophesied into the life of Lady Deken Naomi. Now, background story. Sometime in February 2011, she woke up one morning feeling okay and normal and went about her normal duties. Around that time, she had a problem with her car, so took her car to the mechanic. Over there, whilst waiting for them to fix her car, she decided to rest. Unknown to her, she had passed out. When she came to, a stranger she didn't know told her that she had passed out and advised her to go and see the doctor because he thought she was sick. She took his advice and the next day, which was a working day Tuesday, on her way to work, passed by the hospital. She went for a normal checkup. After running all the tests, the doctor asked her, Madam, did you come with anyone here? She said, no, I drove myself here. And asked, is there a problem? The doctor said, oh no, there's no problem. But next thing she saw, a nurse was bringing in a wheelchair. She was put in a wheelchair and rushed into the ward, and drips were put on her. Now, for a routine checkup that she went for, she ended up staying at the hospital for five whole days. Why? Around this time, her BP was 54 over 50, which is extremely low. Medical practitioners will tell you that Normal BP is maybe 120 over 80. The least you can go is maybe 90 over 60. So for 54 over 50, it means she was a walking dead. I don't know which arrow of death has been shot at you. Any arrow of accident and sickness, clap your hands and scatter. Now, around the fifth day, she was feeling okay, feeling better, and she was supposed to be discharged. Whilst waiting for the doctor to come and just sign her discharge notes, she decided to go to the washroom. As soon as she got out from the bed, she just collapsed again, and she couldn't get up. She felt a sharp pain in her back and had to shout for nurses to come and help her up. Tests showed that two of her vertebrae, her backbone, had collapsed on the nerve, and this rendered her paralyzed for the next five months. This was when Mama Rita sent for her for Royal Ladies Camp and prophesied that into her. Right after this encounter on the altar of Apostle General, the Lord began to straighten her backbone. The Lord started putting strength in her weak legs. The Lord started to breathe life into her. Any spirit of death in your life, I pray life in the name of Jesus. Life into your dead finances. Life into your dead family. Life into every dead situation in your life. Here she stands today healthy and strong. That was testimony number one. Mama Rita also prophesied that her husband will be made an ambassador in this country. In the year 2018, he was appointed as an ambassador to Qatar.
That was testimony number two. Number three, Mama Rita prophesied that her children will go to school abroad. Today, indeed, some of her children went to school abroad. Out of her children, she has three medical doctors. She has a me mechanical engineer. She has one who just finished LLB, about to go to the law school. She has an economist, and all her children are doing so well. The Lord used the woman of God to speak into her life, and every word that she spoke has come to pass. Here she stands 11 years later, alive and strong. Her family is doing well. She's a business owner. Her, and she tells me that just last week, her husband got a new appointment. He has been appointed as a lecturer of University of Ghana, Lesiad. There, as an associate professor, the flower garland you see there with the cake is her handwork. The Lord has blessed them through the woman of God. And she's just here to say thank you to God and thank you to the woman of God for obeying the call of God. If she hadn't sent for her that day, she would not be standing here today. Thank you. God bless you. Every word the woman of God will speak over your lives today. I know that it will come to pass. A year from today, you will come and testify. God bless you. Jesus, oh, Dima Fue, Messiah, oh, in Yehovah, Yebeda, Wasi, oh, in Yehovah, Yebeda, Wasi, oh, 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 Next on stage as one of the dynamic choirs here in the headquarters, they are filled with anointing, they exude power and presence when they sing. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Pillars of Praise. So 
sing my song to you. I exalt thee. Oh, oh Lord, I exalt thee. I exalt thee. Na 
blessed, blessed 60th birthday, mighty woman, my sister in the Lord. I wish you everything that I could wish for myself. On your 60th birthday, I wish that God could continue to strengthen your shoulders so that you are able to carry the vision that he has given unto you. On your 60th, I wish you good health. I wish you more money. I wish you more anointing. I pray that may this God that you will serve for so many years should continue to bless you tremendously. Six zero six on the sixth day, the Lord created man. So he imprinted himself, the image of God imprinted itself on man. I pray that on your 60th birthday, may that imprint of Jehovah be elevated in your life. In the name of Jesus, I wish you everything of the best. I love you. I love you. I love you. May this God truly, truly bless you abundantly. Like I said, I wish you everything that I could wish for myself in ministry, in relationships, in family, in every area of your life. I wish you all the best, everything that I could wish for myself. I love you very much. My husband and I and my family, Sipiwe and Luvuno, we love you and CTCM and the women of Shiloh, we love you dearly. Thank you. God bless you, my sister. Put your hands together for Jesus. Now let's acknowledge all the choirs that have been a blessing to us tonight. From Powerline Voices and Susan Owusu Memorial Choir. Uh, Praising Showers, let's acknowledge Praising Showers. Royal Voices and Pillars of Praise. Thank you so much. God bless you. We have a few groups that would like to make presentations to Mama Rita. And I would like them to please kindly come up to the right hand side of the stage. The staff of Royal House Chapel, Amor Beres Ministry, Royal House Chapel, Koforidia Assembly, old students from Gimpa, St. Mary's Year um, 81 Group, Royal Purple, and Graphic Communications Group. Can their representatives kindly um, come to the side of the stage? While the program was going on, we have a few um, sons of the Apostle General that walked in and we would like to acknowledge them. Shall we welcome the presence of Reverend Nikwe and his wife? Reverend Nikwe and his wife, can we please have the lights so we can notice them? Thank you so much. God bless you, sir, for coming. We have Reverend Eddie Lamte. Reverend Eddie Lamte, God bless you. God bless you. Shall we please have some lights? More lights, more lights. We have the senior pastor of Royal House Chapel, Sohotum Assembly, Reverend Francis Aloti Anan. He's here. God bless you right there. We have the area head of Royal House Chapel, the Western Region, Reverend Peter Emesi and his wife. They are here all the way from Takrade. All the way from Takrade. God bless you, sir. The area head of Royal House Chapel, Greater Accra Area A, Reverend Anthony Kukubo is here. Reverend Kukubo, he's around there. The area head, we will be seeing him very shortly, of Royal House Chapel, Eastern Region, from Koforidia, all the way from Koforidia, they will be coming to the stage. Area head, Royal House Chapel, Greater Accra Area E, led by Reverend Moses Lai, is here. Reverend Moses Lai. Royal House Chapel, Central Region, Area A, Reverend Frank Adams is here. Royal House Chapel, Greater Accra, Area D, led by Reverend Derek Amano is here. Royal House Chapel, Volta Region, Area C, and Eastern Region, Area B, led by Reverend 
Amenume is here. Shall we acknowledge Reverend Amenume? God bless you. It's right there. And the latest 60th uh, birthday celebrant, the area head of Greater Accra Area C, the uncle of the house, the longest serving senior associate pastor of Royal House Chapel. Shall we acknowledge Reverend Johnny Apiakran, who celebrated his 60th birthday on the 18th of May, just last week. God bless you. We wish you a happy birthday. Oh, come on. Are we appreciating the uncle of the house? Bringing us one minute of presentation. One minute. Shall we have all of them to the stage, please? All of all the groups to the stage. All the groups to the stage. The first group we will hear from is the Royal House Chapel staff. Royal House Chapel staff. One minute greetings and presentations. Praise the Lord. In the Gospel of John, John the Revelator described himself as the disciple that Jesus loved. It wasn't the other disciples who said it of him, he said it himself. This evening, being the spiritual people that we are, we also proclaim that as the favorite sons and daughters of Mama Rita, we are here to honor us because this woman has loved us. She is the woman that God has given to mother us and bring us into the fullness of his purpose for him. Amen. Mama Rita's love is not theoretical. Um, it is not mere words, abstract um, theoretical jurisprudential concepts that nobody understands. Her love is practical. When you are hurt, Mama Rita will comfort you. When you are aching, she'll give you butterfly kisses that will soothe your wounds. When your pocket is empty, Mama Rita will give you money. She's a practical woman. And being her daughters and sons, being her sons and daughters, we want to love her as practically as she has loved us. Mama Rita, we are here with a confession. And we know that with all the independent witnesses here, our confession is admissible. Number one, we want you to know that this year at Shiloh, there will be no more water problems. Why? Because we have conspired with the contractors there for a permanent supply this year of an extra 20,000 liters of water. Are we permanent appreciating supply this? supply of 20,000 liters of water. God bless you. God increase you, Mama Rita. We love you. Thank you, Royal House Chapel staff. Shall we welcome Amobere's prayer ministry? One minute presentation and well wish. Amen. Please try to join me here. Tonight we are here to celebrate a woman who has lived her life to the benefit of humanity. Mommy, by your magnanimity, some of us have found a place in the kingdom. On the occasion of your sister's birthday, I'm a bearer's prayer ministry. We are here to say God bless you. The only thing that I can say is that when the women didn't have a place to meet and to gather, the night when we started Royal Ladies at the city of Shiloh, you instructed that we should go and pray towards the program. And I remember very well that night, that very night, when we were approaching Shiloh, Mommy was coming from Shiloh, having worked through the day, and you could see that she has been beaten by the sun. And I said to myself, what is making this woman to go through this toil? 
for the sake of the women of Royal House Chapel. Mommy, may God bless you. May God honor you. May your tears be rewarded. And the occasion of your birthday, all we ask for is that may the dew of the heavens and the fatness of the earth be your portion. We love you. Thank you, Amobere. Shall we welcome Koforidia Assembly, led by the area head of Eastern Region, Reverend Paul Otri Boateng. Thank you, Pastor Papa. Help me celebrate the birthday mama in the house. Celebrate her. <laughs> Mommy, happy birthday to you. You always look beautiful, but tonight is exceptional. We had to get ready. We started preparing around 2 in the afternoon just to come and join your worship. Mommy, you've been a blessing to us, to my family, my children, and my wife, and my extended family, my sisters, everybody, my late brother. You were the one who introduced me to Apostle General years in London. And Daddy, I thank you for choosing Mommy. You chose the right woman for us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You are the best. Thank you. On this special day, we wish you a very, very happy 60th birthday. We wish you long life. We wish you prosperity. Mommy, you'll be a happy woman. Amen. You will enjoy your days. Amen. You will see more blessings and blessings and blessings. And this is just the beginning. We love you. Thank you so much. In Jesus' for being name. For us. Thank you. Shall we welcome representing all students from Gimpa, Madam Emilia Ahaji? Mama, you look beautiful. As the adage goes, behind every successful man, there is a woman. But I would like to say that. Behind every successful woman, there is a man. Apostle General, thank you for making her who she is. This is a little citation from the Gimpa alumni. And Mama, I would like to read that to you. Is it in your one minute? Or? Yes. Reverend Mrs. Rita Crunchy Ankara. On the occasion of your 60th birthday, the eighth batch of the Master of Governance and Leadership class of Gimpa celebrates you. You have not only chalk academic successes, but also touched your generation with the power of God. You are indeed the Deborah of our day, a game changer and undoubtedly a great motivator. We are proud to be associate, associated with you. Mama, happy birthday. We love you. Very much. Shall we welcome Graphic Communication Group? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we bring you greetings from the staff and management of the Graphic Communications Group Limited. We are happy to be part of Mama Rita's Day because we are the official last bonds. Whether you like it or not, please. Here we are, the mirror family. The official last bonds of Mama Rita. And we were happy she accepted to be our model mother because one, when we came to her, she had a tight schedule. She showed us what she had to do throughout the year and her engagement in and out of Ghana. But she said, because it is the mirror, we'll come on board. Thankfully, her brand fits perfectly with us. We are a family brand focusing on women. Women are successful, women who are mothers, women who are leaders, like Mama Rita. And so, coincidentally, none of us knew it was a 60th birthday. Coincidentally, this is the year the Lord made it possible for her to be our model mother. And we are so grateful. This evening is the first time we are seeing us here. But you, you see more of us throughout the year because officially she's our mama. We started eating her food. I remember in the festival, people were saying provisions, provisions. She started giving us our share. We'll come and start worshiping with you. You can subscribe to the digital version of the mirror. Every week we'll be here, our new stands will be here. And don't worry, even if you want to sing, you want to dance, call us. It will be published in the mirror. Thank you so much, Amarita. God bless you so much. So on Mother's Day, when we yeah. celebrated her, she was out of the country, okay. so we couldn't present her her gift. Papa and other family members received it on her behalf. 
Today we are here with our token to say thank you. And we brought you a customized cake so that you remember that the mayor family is here to stay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Graphic Communications Group. Thank you, Royal House Chapel staff. Thank you, Koforidu Assembly. Thank you, Prayer, Amoberes Prayer Ministry. God bless you. They are going to be presenting to Mama Rita. Last but not the least, we have the alumni of St. Mary's School, Royal Purple 81. Smoga, oh, the whole year, all, all, all year groups. Smoga, St. Mary's, alumni of St. Mary's. God bless you. Please. Veritus, Veritus, Veritus. Mama Rita. We call her Mama One. Because she's been very instrumental in the development of our colleague honor girls. Today we are here to celebrate a wonderful woman, a selfless woman. Her mates will bear me witness and the entire St. Mary's, the headmistress is here. She would bear all the things that she's done over the years. Mama Rita, we cannot reward you. We don't have anything but to sing the anthem which has brought us this far. Yeah, how gaily all the best singers St. Mary's. See how brightly flowers bloom there. Voices ring out strongly as the Marys, for we are safe beneath the care. Yes, the Marys, as it Marys, yearly every sound with laughter loud and clear. Yes, the Marys, as it Marys, who did hear? For the seedlings that are planted at St. Mary's blossom forth in truth and virtue. And the melodies that ring out at St. Mary's of to faith and love are short. Yes, St. Mary's, at St. Mary's, we shall face the future. Fearless, calm and gay, yes, St. Mary's. Come on, let's acknowledge the alumni of St. Mary's Secondary School, the Smoga. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Oh, this yes. is the staff of the school, current staff and the so headmistress. The headmistress has a short presentation. Special message from headmistress St. Mary's SHS. Ephesians 2.10 For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. A renowned philanthropist whose milestone achievement is to lift burdens of those she comes across is here we are celebrating Mama Rita giving hope with the message of love and concern. The compassion that you show to others and your school especially is heartwarming and inspiring. You are truly outstanding. Mama Rita, St. Mary's Senior High School, your alma mater, from 2006 to date, you solely sponsor the Best Staff Awards for teachers and workers for the annual speech and prize giving days. In 2010, you sponsored the headmistress, the Beza, and the assistant administration with a fully paid trip to South Africa as their 60th birthday anniversary. You have other sponsorships. You give scholarship to needy but brilliant students and even scholarship to those who qualify to the universities. 
there is a case in point which magnifies your ministry. There was this girl who had no father, but you have sponsored her. She's now reading civil engineering, second year at KNUST. Mama Rita, God richly bless you. Bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much, um, headmistress of St. Mary's and current staff. So we appreciate all those that gave presentations. We have reached a very critical part of this celebration. And need I remind you, in the beginning I told you, the only thing that Mama Rita wanted to do to celebrate today her 60th birthday was to spend time with God in worship. Yesterday, in the Apostle General's message, he said, true praise is given by those who have received a blessing from God. Today may not be your 60th birthday, but God has been good to you. We are currently in the month of May, and God has preserved your life. God has provided for you. God has kept you alive despite your numerous travels. Today may not be your 60th birthday, but there is a certain kind of praise in your mouth. True praise is reserved for people who have received God's blessing. Tonight, you have an opportunity to submit yourself as a candidate of true praise. In the next hour, we have three carefully selected individuals who are about to usher us into the presence of God. Joe Metal is here. <laughs> Celestine Donko is here. MOG Music is here. But I don't want the next hour to be about them or even about Mama Rita. It's about you offering true praise based on what God has done for you. If you sit here and God has not done anything for you, that's fine. Enjoy us and enjoy the music. But if you are here and you can count your blessings, this next session is for you. On the stage, Joy Metal, Celestinonko, MOG Music. God bless you. In 1994, Mama Rita started the Royal Ladies Ministries with only 12 women in Accra, Ghana, growing it into a movement with thousands of members in several branches and affiliates all over the world. Yes, when the Lord changes your story, many shall call you blessed. Join the Royal Ladies International Conference 2022 on the theme, And They Shall Call Me Blessed. Luke chapter 1 verse 48. Date, 30th June to 3rd July 2022. Venue, the city of Shiloh. Speakers are Apostle General Sam Crunchy Ankara, Reverend Emmanuel T. Agomada, Reverend Mrs. Faith Nguali, Reverend Mrs. Nandi Amano, and Reverend Mrs. Rita Crunchy Ankara. Side attractions include Daughters Arising and Grand Finale and Thanksgiving service of Mama Rita at 60 Celebration. It is time for you to be called blessed. Don't be left out of this lifetime celebration. Royal ladies, arise and shine.
Come on, come on. Yeah, yeah. 
do it again. You've done it before, you will do it again. Hear me, I send the pie to me. I'm a near the pie, I'm in the moon. That's so much in the name. Now, so be to me, that's ready. If you send me, send me, I send me. One was in a bed, and who many must say. Enti maye kom na mi wona mane Na se mi shakwa ya mbaswa Ene wapi pa marewa mi mini swe ni la Na mi uli ya me kambo I have a testimony Testimony A testimony I'll tell the world my story
When I look back, all I can say, me da was your name. Amara na mashaba ya na ma ya. Amara na mashaba ba ka ya. I see. 
lift up your heart. I said on Sunday, watch praise. It's an expression of gratitude in words and in songs. Followed by sacrifices which are acts of worship to a deity. Some bow down to river God, some bow down to stone, some bow down to trees. Who is your God? Who deserves your praise? David said to Michelle, the God who took the kingdom from your father and gave it to me and made me king over Israel, it is in his presence that I play music. I will do it again and again and again and again. Today, oh God, we bring our kingly robes, our positions, our titles, our achievements, our degrees, our wealth, our money, our estate, our houses, our children, our marriages, Whatever you have given to us tonight, we bring them at your feet. Tonight, we humble in your presence. Tonight, we lay down our crowns. And whatever and who we are, it is you. Tonight, our prayer is that we, we will carry your presence with us throughout this week, throughout this month, throughout the months, in the midst of terrorism threats, in the midst of economic threats, in the midst of sicknesses, in the midst of challenges. Lord, carry us in your presence. We worship you for your woman servant who has gathered us tonight at 60 and says she wants nothing but to just be in your presence and to worship. We give you praise. We give you honor. I worship you. I worship Somebody, if God has not heard your voice tonight, let him hear your voice now. If your worship has never gone to the Father, let your worship go right now. Jesus, if you left your degree at home, if you left your master's degree, if you left your position at home, pick it right now. Pick your position and bring it to the presence of God. Hey, if you left your money at home, Bring your money into his presence. Say to the Lord, I am your worship. I am your sacrifice. I worship you. Clap your hands and make a joyful noise. Come on. Jesus. Come on. Let me hear your voice. Sir. Your seat to a moment. Take your seat to a moment. There is an example I want you to learn from me tonight, which is that I want us to remain in the presence of God until the woman of God for whom we have gathered sends us away. Let's submit to her authority. The day is a day. For you to take Monday 
to come to be in the presence of God and to stay at this time. We appreciate it. God appreciates it. The Holy Spirit appreciates it. God, thank you. One more favor and we'll be out of this place. I am not interested in offering and sacrifices tonight because if that will take your time, let's, let's forget about it. We are not here because of them. We are here because we want to pour our hearts. We are here because we have brought our crowns and our robes like David and we have come to present them to God. Let Mama Rita have the last, last words and we'll be out of this place. Our wonderful guests have passed on some notes to you and we'll be very grateful if you honor the notes that have been passed on to you. Woman, this is your day. We'll be patient until you let us go. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome the celebrant, the great woman of God, Reverend Rita Crunchy Ankara Elias. Mama Rita, also known as Mama Shiloh. Thank you, MOG. Thank you, Celestine Donko. Thank you, Joe Metto. Thank you, Prison Showers. Thank you, Voices in Worship. Thank you, Pillars. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for your patience. Let's honor the woman of God. God bless you. I want to say a very big thank you to everybody that is here. I feel very, very honored. And I can see that the whole of heaven is up blessing us. Before I allow you to go, I want to do this small thing. In my life, please be seated just for five minutes. In my life, I have met angels. I've had a lot and a lot of angelic encounters, both heavenly beings and earthly beings. And one of the earthly angels I encountered is here. She's actually the reason for which I came into full-time ministry. Please bring me the hampers. I worked, I know this is a, a big surprise to her. I worked with Bank for Housing and Construction for 10 years. Whilst I was working at the bank, I established Royal Ladies Ministry. Then my first ever sermon in Royal House Chapel, we were inaugurating royal ladies and I was preaching for the very first time on a Tuesday. She was my manager at the bank. So I went to her and I said, Auntie Vayu, I am doing something tomorrow. I am preaching my first ever sermon tomorrow in church. It was a Tuesday evening service. And I said, I beg of you, this is my first ever sermon in Royal House Chapel. And I don't want to mess up. Please give me this Tuesday to prepare so that I can minister in the evening. She gave me the permission. After I was done, I wanted her to know that I was actually not lying to her and what I said was true. In those days, it was cassettes. So I brought the cassette to her. And I said, this is the reason why I asked for permission. I just gave it to her and then went back. I was a teller into the cage. The following day, she called me. And she said, Rita, what are you doing here? She said, Rita, this is not your place. I know you love being a banker, but this is not your place. She said, I want you to resign and go and join your husband. I wrote my resignation letter and sent it to her. And this is the icing on the cake. 
when I came on full time, for the first two years on full time, Helping my husband build Royal House Chapel. Helping with deliverance, helping with counseling, helping with the uh, uh, marriage department, helping with Royal Ladies, organizing Royal Ladies. And the year I resigned was the very first year we organized the camp meeting. I resigned in May, within a month, we were having our first ever camp meeting at the Girl Guy Center. First two years of when I came home. This woman every year within the two years sent me thousand CDs. Every month. She sent me thousand CDs every month for two years. Auntie Vayu, I have never forgotten. Shall we welcome my manager at Bank for Housing and Corporation, America House. Mrs. Violet Botry. Please don't make me cry. I have cried enough. This is to appreciate you. Maybe, but for you, Royal House Chapel wouldn't have been where it is today. But for you, royal ladies will not be where it is. You pushed me into ministry. And today, here I am. In my hands is a little seed for you. I have a hamper of groceries and another hamper of laces and Holland clothes. Thank you. On behalf of my husband, on behalf of Royal House Chapel, on behalf of Royal Ladies, I want to say a very big thank you. Praise the Lord. But I don't, after my mom died, I thought I would never have the opportunity to cry again. But today, this my daughter has made me cry again. But what I want to say is that it's not me. Who am I? It's not me. It was God. It's God who use me. I was just a mouthpiece. When I became the manager of the branch at that time, I saw her, I saw the potential in her. She's a very matured person. What goes on in the banking hall, even when people push her to the end and she tries to rebuke them, I didn't understand at first. I said, ah, you, Rita, you are a soft mommy. You should be helping to bring peace to this banking hall. Then one day she said something. I said, Madam, leave me to do what I'm doing. You don't know. And I said, I don't know. Like, I don't know what. But I kept quiet. But when she's working in the cage, I see that sometimes people come to her for maybe counseling or things. She didn't wow. know I used to wow. look at her where my office was. I could see her, everybody in the banking hall, but 
They couldn't see me. That's the way it's constructed. So I'll be watching everybody. And I said, manager, you have to know everybody's capabilities. And I saw the potential in her. But something was happening in the banking hall. She was not aware. Anytime Osofu Penin Ankara was having a program, that day we were not balanced. I said, ah. I wanted there so much to go and help the man because I saw something. But anytime there's a program, sometimes it was very near us at 80 years or so. That day, we were not balanced. So one day I said, hey, madam, you can't sit here and wait for this program, uh, for this ministry to pick up before you go and join, like what? Go and help the man to so that you know the uh, all the integrities of the ministry, so that you can help me because you are very good. Like she said, when I listened to her, I realized that oh, she was making a lot of sense. So I made it a point that uh, this woman, you don't, be, you are sitting in the cage for what? This person they are paying you. Go live and go and join the man, and God Himself will make a way. So she was a little bit, uh, she, she did it. So you know, I like, yeah, sorry. She said, you know, I like life, maple life. Now, if I go, how can I finance my life in? I said, go, God will provide. And she went. But immediately she went, I was like, God, what have I done? If this thing doesn't work out, this woman will always be cursing me. <laughs> so anytime they pay me, I say, hey, let me go and give a lesson to this woman so that it will encourage her to do the work. I knew it will succeed at all times. But I, will, I, will, I don't want anybody to honor me. It wasn't me. Even I forgot about it until she started telling me. One day I came for a program here and I saw that uh, this place was really, really rocking. I mean, God was here. So I said, oh, thank God. Now I've done my work. Oh, now I can spend the rest of my money <laughs> all by myself. So I'm very, very impressed and I thank God for how far she has brought this church and especially to her and the work she's doing. Uh, is the doings of God. So all the glory and the honor and everything should go to God. I was just a mouthpiece. Thank you, God. By my sister, I don't know what is in this, but all the things you are doing, the school fees and those things, I give this to you. Add it to it. I'll even bring some more. As I was sitting there, I said, hey, we need to bring some more money. I know God will provide. So you kindly add this to the school fees, whatever it is that you need to do, add it to it. Thank you, my dear. Thank you, everybody. Shall we give a hand clap to my manager? We have drinks and kebab for everybody. They are right at the foyer. Everybody will have one. We did more than enough for everyone. And our special guests, um, our protocol people will take you to um, our King's Department, our Children's Auditorium, we have turned it into a conference room tonight. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Please rise up on your feet. Forgiving God when we close our cutters. Dr. Anas is reminding me of my cake. When we close, um, we can take it to the conference room. Uh, so those who want to take pictures of the cake, please do. 
when we close to save a bit of time, we will cut it in the conference room. For giving God your worship. And for giving God your praise. May he honor you. For praising God with your substance. With who you are. In spite of your academic achievements, you still came before the altar to honor him with your praise. May God honor you with money. May God honor you with perfect health. May God honor you with long life. Apostle General said yesterday, The one of the reasons why you worship God is to cause your enemies to bow at your God. Anybody and anything that have elected themselves as enemies in your life, today your praise, today your worship, today your sacrifice, Today your adoration, today your lying prostrate before God, today your kneeling before God will cause them to bow in shame. I release a mother's blessing over you. May you be blessed. May you be honored. May you be lifted up in the name of Jesus. Like I said yesterday, if you are not 60 yet, you will attain 60. If you are 60, you will get to 70. If you are 70, you will get to 80. If you are 80, you will get to 90. And if you are 90, you will get to 100 and beyond. I refuse it. That anybody at the sound of my voice and anybody live streaming with us through the internet will die before their time. You will be celebrated. You will be honored. You will be promoted. You will increase in every area of your life. If there is anything missing in your life, by your praise tonight, I cause the God I have served these 40 years to honor you. Tonight, if there is any door that has never been opened unto you, I open that door in the name of Jesus. And if there is any door that you want closed in your life, I shut that door forever. In the name of Jesus, you are favored. You would increase. You will be promoted. You will be protected in the name of Jesus. I want people that believe in honoring God with their sacrifice. Nobody will tell you, you can drop your sacrifice in the, on the altar. Honorable Natoshi and your husband, I want to honor you. Please don't go yet. Mama Dora, I want to honor you. Mama Lorraine, I want to honor you. All my family members who came, the Usu family, the Damwa family, my colleagues from... St. Mary's Secondary School, Smogan, and the staff headmistress, housemistress, and the students of St. Mary's Secondary School, I honor you. From Gimpa, I honor you. All our pastors that came from the assemblies, I honor you. On the day of your honor, may men honor you.
take a picture before you go. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. May the Lord honor you. May the Lord promote you. May the Lord increase you. May the Lord cause you to dance. May the Lord cause you to laugh. Anybody that came that I didn't see you, may you be honored. All the choirs that yes, came, Lord. may you be honored. All our special guests to the conference room. All our special guests to the conference room. Yes, we will come there. Oh, yes, Rini. Rini Q, thank you for my dress. Rini Q, thank you for my dress. Yes, Mame Dokono, thank you so much. Yes, thank you for your support over Hope the years. All the yeah, sons yeah, and daughters yeah, of Apostle General, I, I want to say a big thank you. Hope you are In most hospitals across Ghana, less privileged newborn mothers who are unable to pay their medical bills are detained. This means that until the bills are settled, they would have to stay in the hospitals they received care. It can be a month, two, or even more. On 7th May 2022, the story was different for some of these mothers detained in various hospitals in the country. This is because a timely intervention by the Women's Ministry of the Royal House Chapel International, Royal Ladies, dubbed the Baby Project, was carried out nationwide to discharge over 50 mothers who were unable to pay for their hospital bills after delivery. The local assemblies of the church in all the regions visited health facilities and paid the hospital bills of mothers who needed financial assistance to enable them to be discharged by the hospitals from cloth, diapers, toiletries, baby clothing, baby food and provisions. All the newborn mothers received packages to help lessen the burden on them. We say, may God bless you, go and enjoy, and I know you are laughing already. The initiative which coincided with the annual Mother's Day celebration formed part of activities lined up for the 60th birthday celebration of the President of the Royal Ladies Ministries International, who is also the Premier Lady of the Royal House Chapel International. Reverend Mrs. Rita Conche Anka. In the Greater Accra region, the teams visited the Kolibu Teaching Hospital where 15 mothers were discharged, Tema General Hospital where 6 mothers were discharged, and the Lakma Hospital where 8 mothers were discharged. A baby was also discharged without the mother due to complications leading to the death of the mother. A special donation was made to the baby's father and the caretaker trained by the hospital to take care of the baby boy because he is a preterm baby. Other health facilities visited where the Centreso Government Hospital in Kumasi, Ashanti region, where the team paid the bills for seven babies in critical conditions who were on oxygen. 
at the Peking Government Hospital in the Volta region, seven mothers were discharged. The team also paid for blood transfusion from that will be used at the maternity ward of the hospital. At the Suhum General Hospital in the Eastern region, six mothers were discharged. The team also paid the bills of a toddler who had suffered severe burns and was on admission at the hospital. Other government hospitals in Cape Coast, Central Region, Sinyai Bunahafu Region and Takra, the Western Region also benefited from the Mamarita at 60 Baby Project. The mothers expressed appreciation to the ministry for remembering them in their times of need. Vice President of the Royal Leaders Ministries International, Reverend Dr. Mrs. Anastasia Yuenchi, who led the team to the Kolibu Teaching Hospital, said the payment of the bills for the mothers was in line with the humanitarian activities of Royal House Chapel International. Our mother this year celebrates 60 years, May, exactly 23rd of May 2022. So as part of the activities marking the celebration, which also coincides with Mother's Day, we are here to make sure that we discharge as many mothers as we can. A total amount of 51,997 Ghana cities was spent in discharging the mothers and in all, almost 100,000 Ghana cities was spent on the Mamarita at 60 baby project. The mother's excitement when they were discharged after their bills were paid was priceless. It was indeed an emotional event. Hello, my name is Estelle, Mrs. Estelle Oparimate in Waterfield. Um, so growing up as an, an only child um, with my dad not being around was a very, I would say, a very hectic one for my mom because I was very, very troublesome. Like, I used to give her a lot of tr troubles, fighting here and there with people, you know. Being an only child, I felt, yeah, everything should go my way. But then it's, it's not like that out there. So I had a lot of issues growing up with friends and all that. And um, one thing I remember was I never missed my marita's office every Sunday. Like my mom used to complain about me a lot to her. And um, she was very supportive in disciplining me, making sure that I was walking the right path and all that. And even in Sunday school, she was always checking out on me. Anytime I do something wrong, she makes sure she puts me in order and all that. Yeah. She was very, very instrumental. Um, from right from my primary stage to GSS, she was there for me. Um, even in the choosing of my school, um, when I chose my schools, I actually didn't mention it earlier. So it, it got to a point where she wanted, she felt like this is where I'm supposed to go to. It didn't come out that way. So I had to go to another school and she was like, okay, fine. She gave me her blessing to go to school and then make sure that I bring, I do well there and all that. And by God's grace, I came out well and moved on to the university. So unfortunately for me, in the university, I lost my mom. And one thing I really thank God for is um, giving me a mother like Mama Rita. Mama Rita stepped in as a mom in my life all through, like from the time my mom passed on to date, she's been a mother to me. Um, she's been very supportive. Like throughout university, she was there. There were times where she called to give me provisions to school and all that. She actually made me feel loved. I, I didn't feel the absence of my mom like all through that time. Yeah, she was very, very supportive. And by God's grace, it got to a point where 
um, I was going to get married and I introduced my husband to him. She made sure that I was making the right choice. She scrutinized my husband very well, do, did some background checks. Upon all her busy schedule, she was in my business. And that's one thing I'm grateful for. Throughout the planning of my marriage, the wedding and everything, she was very supportive. She actually helped us to cut a lot of costs. She bought my wedding gown and all that. She was, she was there throughout the wedding. She coordinated everything at the reception. Like, you know, like I'm her own. She, she treated me like her own biological daughter and I'm really, really grateful for. Many, many people would love to have this, but they are not getting it. By God's grace, I got it and I'm very, very grateful, mommy. Thank you for being there for me throughout all these years to this. Even when I was pregnant, you weren't in the country, I told you about it, you were there, supportive and all that. After birth, you were still not around, you came back, you came back to Ghana, you made, you, you shopped for my child, you brought me all the goodies and things from the US and I'm really grateful for that. Mommy, thank you so much for being a mother figure in my life, thank you so much for loving me, thank you so much for being there, for supporting me and making sure that I never felt le let alone. I never felt rejected. Thank you so much for everything. God bless you, mommy. And I'm using this opportunity to say, may the God of our Apostle Genoa never ever stop blessing you. May he continue to reward you and, and, and grant you all your heart desires. I'm very grateful for your life. Thank you, mommy, and God richly bless you. Happy, happy birthday. Love you so much. Blessed, blessed, 60th birthday, mighty woman, my sister in the Lord, 